Welcome to our Section 3 Single Types Memory Palace Walkthrough. As always, consider these section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. So to recap, in our first episode, we heard the story about how the Tron light cycle was used to build a wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Then, we met a group of shady politician Python snakes, and we learned about their plans to move to Jupiter. And then after that, we met a butterfly who had a hard day at work, and a ninja turtle bartender who had all of the right answers for him. Along with our butterfly friend, we learned about shot classes and how they can hold all sorts of different types of liquor and also other specific brands of liquor and the distinction between the two. After that, we met a pair of professional streakers, you know, nude streakers, and they came up with an ingenious plan to use a hello my name is name tag to sneak back into their local football stadium and do what they were put on earth to do, streak in public. And then finally, we ended with a heartwarming tale of how a group of penguins escaped their zoo enclosure by acting low class, burping and, and such. So now get ready to continue the amazing adventure as we explore more of our Learn Python Memory Palace. So let me walk you over here to the pool tables because I want to tell you a story about a unicorn who was bored at work. This unicorn is a professional pool hustler, pool shark. And she's got a good friend, a large five-foot centipede with 13 broken arms. Centipedes, maybe in real life, but definitely in this imaginary situation, have 18 arms. So 13 of the 18 are broken and in casts. It's very hard for this centipede. It's going to take three, maybe even four weeks before these arms heal. And he's a friend of Miss Unicorn, and he says to her, you want to grab a root beer, just catch up? It's been a while since we, you know, chatted and hung out. And of course, this unicorn pool hustler, she's thinking, yeah, that would be great. Grab a root beer, hang out, relax, hear the story about what happened to your 13 broken arms and legs, and you know, how that whole thing played out, and you know, if you make sure you'd be okay, because I care about you. But there hasn't been a lot of pool suckers coming by for me to take advantage of. You know, I can't fake a few games and like I don't know what I'm doing and then put real money on the line and take them for what they're worth. So I'm a little bit strapped for cash. But luckily, this centipede with 13 broken arms and legs in casts, he says, no worries. Root beer floats are two for one on Tuesdays. And today is a Tuesday. So it's on me. The unicorn, she can't really resist, even though she should probably hang out and see if any suckers come to the pool table. You can't beat a free root beer float with a good buddy of yours. So she goes off and does it. And they sit enjoying root beers and gossiping about a mutual friend who makes really bad decisions with his love life. <laughs> Now let me direct your attention over this way, where our next story is much more dark, much more disturbing and evil than our last story, because here is the Grim Reaper, and the Grim Reaper has just got done doing his job. He's death. He takes souls, and unfortunately for this little fiddler boy from Georgia, he's just taken his soul, and he needs to deliver it to heaven. This was an unfortunate situation for this little fiddler boy. He's a good kid and didn't do anything wrong. It's just one of those weird things in life, but he had good parents, good soul. Everything was good about him. It's just, you know, you never know. Some people just die randomly. It's nature of life, okay? So anyways, that's out of the question. Good kid. But the Grim Reaper now has his soul and needs to deliver it to heaven. And as he turns to go out the door to start his journey to heaven, a puff of smoke appears and everything goes dark. And then all the colors in the room turn sort of reddish and hellish. And all of a sudden, the devil appears, and he was coming to challenge that little fiddler from Georgia to a fiddle-off, where that little boy could have won a golden fiddle if he outfiddled the devil, but if he didn't, then the devil would have got his soul. But now the Grim Reaper has the soul, and he says, Ah, looks like I'm late. I was going to do a fiddle-off with this kid. And the Grim Reaper says, 
Oh, actually, when I'm holding their souls, I can do whatever they did. Like, I have all their skills and stuff like that. So the devil says, oh, all right. Well, then how about me and you, Grim Reaper? We have a fiddle off. And if you win, you can have this golden fiddle. And if you lose, then I get your soul, which is the little kid's soul, because the Grim Reaper doesn't have one. And the Grim Reaper says, you're on. You're on, devil. So the devil says, I'll go first, and it sounded a little something like this. Then the Grim Reaper thinks about how great his skills are and says, you're going to regret that, devil. And then he goes, a little something like this. And after this, it's really obvious that the Grim Reaper with the soul of the little boy from Georgia is a better fiddle player than the devil. Continue, or wait, then the Grim Reaper continues off to heaven with the boy's soul where he lives in peace for all of eternity. Finn. Subscribe to the New Monic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.